Uh, right, well, I'm Mark Steele, and I present a show called Mark Steele's in Town. The good things about living in Wigan, the world-famous Wigan Pier. Come and see the market. We all like the pies in Wigan. The rugby stadium. Well, they play football as well, I think. I'm not certain. It's a round ball. We go to a different town for each programme and we do a whole show exclusively about that town to the people in the town. Thanks, thanks very much. Welcome to Mark Steele's in town, which this week comes from the delicate, posh country village of Wigan. Uh, a town that I think everyone should be sent to if they have ever said, the thing is, these days we're all middle class, really, aren't we? <laughs> Strangely, one of the dangers of coming to these places is that you can come to a place that really is quite grimy and uh, end up liking it probably a bit too much. So I, I'm a, in a little bit of danger of that here because there's loads of very likeable things about Wigan and I have to keep reminding myself, no, mostly it is not all that touristy really. I was in a cafe in the indoor market where you can buy this stew called lobbies and tea from a huge green pot and there was this old couple wrapped in about 40 layers of clothing about a yard away from me and they were looking at me as if to say he's not from round here <laughs> and then one of them said to his wife pointing at me he said Manchester thespian I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> One consequence of the industrial past here is your nickname, uh, the Pie Eaters, which is what everyone else in Lancashire calls people from, from Wigan. Apparently, this is because in the general strike of 1926, the Wigan miners went back to work when the miners of the Lee coal field stayed out on strike, and the Lee miners said that the Wigan miners would be eating humble pie forever. Even so, the name would only have stuck if you did, in Wigan, eat more than the average quota of pies for a town. <laughs> like, for example, there is a sticker that I've seen on vans that says no pies are left in this van overnight. <laughs> <laughs> and Wigan is home of the World Pie Eating Championships. <laughs> now, the winner, I've found out, of the World Pie Eating Championships. It's not a matter of how many pies you eat, it's who can eat one pie the quickest. And I actually took part in the competition this year. I've got that sort of terrible feeling that it, it, it should be easy, but it can't be easy, can it, to win a World Championship in anything? But anyway, I don't know, we'll give it a go. And it's very simple, eat it as quickly as possible. When you've eaten your... Card, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the pie up. Sorry. When you've eaten your pie, it's a case of get your hand up in there and you've got to show an empty gob. Three, two, one, get it! Oh, yeah. Come on, Chris! Get it in your mouth! Here! Yeah. No, no, no. From it's a Wigan conspiracy. Wigan conspiracy. I won that, and I'm from Salford. No, no, this man definitely won. Wigan. I suspect Seth Flatter had a hand in this. Well, it, it was a game. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The terrible thing is. The sports fanatic in me is actually genuinely aggrieved because he he definitely won it that bloke. Right, but this guy, I mean, he's obviously not from Salford. I mean, it's not a Salford accent. No, I was it? never going to win, was I? I? I think we'd have done it better in London, to be honest. <laughs> and I think when when <laughs> I when I said that to him at the start, I wonder if that I wonder if that affected my chances <laughs> in any way. Can't have done, can it? Pies. Pies aren't all that's eaten in Wigan, of course, because Wigan is the home of the Uncle Joe's Mint Ball. For anyone who doesn't know, or isn't familiar with the delicacy of the Uncle Joe's Mint Ball, it's a Wigan-based sweet that comes in an old red packet with a picture of Uncle Joe in a top hat, and it's made in an old brick factory. And if you go in there and say, your mint balls were mentioned on the radio, they'll say, radio? But it's, <laughs> but it's Christmas 1864. <laughs> I went round the plant. You should go. All go. It's brilliant. 
It is the cutest factory. There's just three big saucepans. That's all there is. That they make the stuff in. Three big saucepans of mint ball mix, and it gets poured into a tray where it goes all gooey, and it's so hard not to find yourself prodding it, even though that means you would spend the rest of your life with your hand encased in solidified mint ball solution. This stuff looks like something that um, you might find on a you might find on another planet. But it is, in fact, a sort of the, uh, an Uncle Joe's mint ball in embryonic form. But it does look as if it sort of could be something that, left to its own devices, could take over the world within three weeks. Oh, another one, and another one, and another one. Have you, have you, eaten have you ever had one of these before? <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens with a lot of landlords at pubs? Yeah. They end up getting drunk. Yeah. Do you uh, end up gorging yourselves on six or seven tins of these a day? Well, you, you could probably tell. I gave up smoking, <laughs> and one of the ways I gave up smoking was do more product testing. <laughs> the only thing that lets it down is that all the workers there are two feet high with orange faces. They work... <laughs> they work 24 hours a day in conditions currently being investigated by Amnesty International. <laughs> Thanks very much, Vicky. Max Steele's In Town was written and performed by Max Steele with additional material by Pete Sinclair. The producer was Sam Bryant.